early 18th century. As a result of the war against the Holy League, the Ottoman Empire had to sign the Treaty of Karlowitz, under the terms of which the Ottomans lost their possessions in Hungary, as well as Transylvania and the Moria. Against the backdrop of military failures, an uprising broke out in Constantinople in 1703, which was joined by a significant part of the Genissaries. Finding himself in a difficult situation, Sultan Mustafa II was forced to renounce the throne in favor of his brother Ahmed III. The new Sultan decided to return the territories that belonged to the Ottoman Empire before the Treaty of Karlowitz, so immediately after ascending to the throne he concentrated his efforts on strengthening his army. By the beginning of 1714, the Sultan managed to gather enough forces to try to regain the lost territories, and he began to take active action. First of all, the Ottomans decided to recapture the Moria from the Venetians, since from a military point of view they were much weaker than the Holy Roman Empire. It should be mentioned that the Sultan hoped that the Austrians, exhausted by the War of the Spanish Succession, simply would not be able to come to the aid of their ally. The Ottomans calculated everything correctly. The fact is that after the end of the War of the Spanish Succession, the Habsburg treasury was practically empty and therefore they could not raise a large army to help the Venetians. In turn, the Venetian Republic simply could not independently resist the numerically superior Ottoman army. In this situation, the Ottomans managed to quickly oust the Venetian troops from Moria, and by 1716 besieged the last stronghold of the Venetians in the region, the island of Corfu. The Venetians' position was rapidly deteriorating, so they called on the Holy Roman Empire to fulfill the obligations it had made when forming the Holy League and go to war against the Ottoman Empire. Due to the difficult financial situation, Charles VI was in no hurry to provide assistance to Venice, but after the French king promised not to invade Italian territories controlled by the Habsburgs, and Pope Clement XI allocated a large sum of money for the war against the Ottomans, he announced on April 13, 1716 and entering the war against the Ottoman Empire. In turn, the Ottomans, having learned about the entry of the Holy Roman Empire into the war, decided to act proactively and attack the enemy before he had time to prepare for hostilities. In April 1716, the Grand Vizier Damit Ali Pasha set out from Constantinople at the head of an army consisting of 40,000 Genissaries and 30,000 Sipahis. The Ottoman army was delayed on the way and only reached Belgrade on July 26, where the Crimean Tatars, Arnauts and Wallachians were already waiting for it. Thus, under the command of Damit Ali Pasha there was a huge army of 130 to 150,000 soldiers. Meanwhile, Prince Eugene of Savoy, who led the Austrian army, was in Petroveradin awaiting the enemy's attack. Eugene of Savoy had 22,000 horsemen and 41,000 infantry at his disposal, but with him in Petroveradin there were only 8,000 soldiers, since the main part of the imperial army was located near the city of Futab. On July 27, the Ottoman army crossed the Sava River and began moving along the banks of the Danube. On August 3, the Ottoman army advancing deep into enemy territory reached the outskirts of Petroveradin, the Grand Vizier immediately ordered his army to begin shelling the city. The Ottomans also began to hastily strengthen their positions in order to complete all the work before the arrival of the Imperial Army. The Imperial Army arrived in the vicinity of Petroveradin on the night of August 5 and Eugene of Savoy decided to immediately act to take the enemy by surprise. On the morning of August 5, the Austrian army received orders to form battle formations. The Imperial Infantry, led by General Heister, took up fortified positions in the center. The left flank housed most of the Imperial cavalry, under the command of Johann von Paffi, while Eugene of Savoy placed the remaining four cavalry regiments on the right flank. Between the center of the army and the left flank, Eugene Savoysky placed six infantry battalions under the command of Alexander von Wurttemberg. The Ottoman vizier, knowing about his numerical advantage, demanded the surrender of Petroveradin, to which Eugene of Savoy replied that the imperial army would attack. At 7 o'clock in the morning, the Austrian army, supported by artillery, launched an offensive. At the very beginning, the Austrians were lucky, the infantry under the command of von Württemberg was able to push back the Ottomans to take their forward positions and capture part of the Ottoman artillery. 
In turn, the Ottoman cavalry launched a charge to dislodge the Austrians from their occupied positions, but were driven back by a counter charge from the Imperial cavalry. In the center things were different. The Imperial infantry advancing in the center, faced with a numerically superior enemy, was unable to dislodge the Genissaries from their fortified positions and were driven back. Having retreated, the Austrian infantry quickly regrouped and launched a new attack, which was supported by Imperial cuirassiers. This time luck turned against the Austrians again. After suffering serious losses, they were again forced to retreat from the Ottoman lines. Encouraged by the success, the Ottoman vizier ordered the Genissaries to attack the retreating Imperial infantry. The Genissaries began to push back the retreating Austrians, but during the attack they exposed both of their flanks, which Eugene of Savoy immediately decided to take advantage of. He ordered his cavalry to attack the left flank of the advancing Genissaries, and the Württemberg battalions, supported by cuirassiers, to attack their right flank. As soon as the Imperial army began attacking the flanks of the Ottoman infantry, the Petroveridan artillery began a massive bombardment of the enemy camp and battle formations. In turn, the Genissaries, who were bogged down in battle with the Imperial infantry, were unable to hold back the simultaneous attack on their left and right flanks, which is why very soon their battle formations were upset, and they began to retreat back. Eugene of Savoy ordered his entire army to go on the offensive. The Ottoman army wavered under the pressure of the Imperials and began to flee. To save the situation, the Grand Vizier attacked the advancing Imperial troops, but was almost immediately killed. All the artillery and the camp of the Grand Vizier fell into the hands of the Imperials, and the remnants of the Ottoman army hastily left the battlefield. Having received news of the defeat at Petroveridin, the Ottoman Sultan ordered an end to the siege of Corfu in order to hastily transfer the freed forces to fight the Austrians. In turn, Eugene of Savoy decided to take advantage of the favorable situation and began moving towards Temesvar, planning to capture the city and establish control over the Banat, which was the last region of the Hungarian kingdom under Ottoman control. The Austrian army, having reached the outskirts of Temesvar, besieged the city. The local garrison resisted, but in October, realizing that help would not come, they decided to surrender the city in exchange for the opportunity to retreat unhindered to Belgrade. Having established control over Temesvar and the entire Banat, Eugene of Savoy began preparations for the upcoming siege of Belgrade. Preparations ended only in the late spring of 1717. On July 16, 1717, the Austrian army under the command of Prince Eugene of Savoy reached the outskirts of Belgrade and began siege operations. Almost immediately after the start of the siege, the Austrians received news that an Ottoman army of about 150,000 soldiers, led by the Grand Vizier Haji Halil Pasha, was rushing to the aid of the Belgrade garrison. Since there were no more than 100,000 soldiers under the command of Eugene of Savoy, he ordered to quickly strengthen his camp and prepare for defense. The Ottoman army arrived in the vicinity of Belgrade on July 28. But despite the numerical advantage, the Grand Vizier did not dare to attack the Austrians. Instead, he ordered the construction of a fortified camp to begin. Thus, the Imperial Army very soon found itself blocked between Belgrade and the Ottoman camp. Despite the fact that the Austrian army found itself in a difficult situation, Eugene of Savoy did not abandon his plans to establish control over Belgrade and continued the siege. On August 14, Austrian artillery managed to hit the Belgrade gunpowder warehouse. Due to the powerful explosion, about 3,000 defenders of the city were killed, and the city fortifications were partially destroyed. Realizing that it was impossible to launch an assault on Belgrade in a situation where there was an Ottoman military camp in the rear of the Imperial Army, Eugene of Savoy, on the night of August 16, he ordered his army to attack the Ottoman camp. The Ottomans were forced to flee. When the garrison of Belgrade learned about the defeat of the army of the Grand Vizier, on August 17, 1717, it decided to capitulate and the city fell into the hands of the Austrians. Having established control over the city, Eugene of Savoy continued his offensive deep into the territory of the Ottoman Empire. In turn, the Ottomans, having lost their army, could not stop the advancing enemy, but luck smiled on them. The fact is that the Habsburg treasury was practically empty, and almost the entire army was involved in the fight against the Ottomans. Therefore, when the Spanish army landed on Habsburg-held Sardinia in November 1717, they were unable to defend the island. 
Thus, peace was greatly needed not only by the Ottomans, but also by the Austrians. Peace negotiations began and on July 21, 1718, the Treaty of Passerowitz was signed, under the terms of which all territories occupied during the war remained under Austrian control, namely the Banat of northern Serbia and western Wallachia, as well as part of Bosnia. The Ottomans retained control over the Moria, which they managed to recapture from the Venetian Republic during the war, and Venice retained control over the Ionian Islands and its possessions in Dalmatia. This ended the Austro-Turkish War. If you liked this video, be sure to subscribe to my channel and click on the bell so you don't miss new videos.